But uh, today I wanted to start with a, um, I'm going to start with this PowerPoint that you can see that talks about um, an industry day that PEO EIS from the Army. So this is the Program Executive Office for Enterprise Information Systems. They gave an event uh, towards the end of last year and they shared a lot of information and that's what we're going to go through. I'm going to go through these slides and just tell you what I look at and why it's important to me and how it gives me next steps to continue to do research further into an agency, or in this case, just even one single program executive office, um, as I go in trying to understand where they're at from, a, in this case, this scenario, a data analytics um, standpoint. So um, as you can see right here, one of the things they start off in their industry brief is since the last time we talked, here's what we've done. And there's so many different reasons I like this, right? So uh, as I come down, one of the first things is let's assume I'm coming at this the same way maybe you're coming at this, where you don't know anything about this agency or in this case, the PEO. So everything's new to you. And, and if I just look at the first bullets, I instantly go, okay, this is the program executive office. These must be major projects or programs that they have. I need to find out what they are. And you'll see as we go through, I'm going to dig further into that. But as I look at it, I can see things like Addis has moved from um, DIBS to RDAP. And so this Addis program used to be in another uh, uh, program management office, and now it's over in RDAP. And we'll go into this. I know there's a lot of acronyms. I'm not here to teach you about the acronyms. What I want to teach you about is the bullets and how you break it down. Um, so anyways, when you look at RDAP alone, this first three bullets, you can see that they're talking about certain activity going on. And the third sub bullet, develop RDAP roadmap to execute army data plan. It tells me two action items immediately. First is at the end, what's the army data plan? Let me go find the army data plan, right? And the army um, makes that available generally publicly and, and sort of most of the services. Um, so I want to get that army data plan. Then I want the RDAP roadmap whether I can find it online or whether it becomes one of my capture or business development questions when I reach into the small business office or when I'm reaching into the RDAP program office itself, I'm going to be asking them about, hey, I noticed you guys said you developed this RDAP roadmap. Can I get a copy of that? Um, how's that roadmap going for you? Right. It, it would allow me to ask a lot of questions. Um, as I continue to come down, uh, the next EBS-C, right? And if you guys are, uh, if any of you are Army data, remember, I'm not trying to be an Army data expert here. What I'm trying to be is showing you how I look at a deck to identify uh, questions or things to follow up on, to follow up tasks. And then what do I do next? And so we'll go through this deck and then I'll show you other areas that I continue the research just off this one single deck that was on the internet, right? So research takes time, but it really is not that hard it's just a process. And once you learn the process, you have that new skill. Anyways, back here, um, it says EBS-C, right? The first thing I really like seeing is there's a new pro uh, project lead or program lead, Preston Hayward. And I'm going to write that name down. Um, who is that person? Um, do I care about EBS-C? And if I do, then Preston Hayward clearly is an influencer in that program that I want to at least follow what Preston is saying. If not, maybe get in and introduce the company, be able to have conversations about how they're continuing to refine their acquisition strategy, et cetera. Um, and same thing as I go through each one of these bullets and you can see this, but here's this GIFM or GFIM and it talks about two vendors that are in there. If I'm looking for a teaming partner, uh, let's say I, I really don't have a lot of, um, I don't have any past performance in, in this area. I might go to Plantera New Wave and see if they've got more than this looks like a phase one SBIR, but doesn't matter. These two company names, I might go look look them up and see if I can find a point of contact and make an introduction. They're potential teaming partners. All of this from this first slide. I'm still at this first slide, right? Um, and each one of these, as I go down, I'm looking at what's there. Phase one efforts are going to subsume uh, six of the 13 legacy systems supporting D2RR. What is D2RR? What are those legacy systems? Which one of those legacy systems might I, if I'm in data analytics or other services, could I help with? And the same thing as you come farther down, right? You can see that Tim Hale is the new project lead or uh, program lead for Addis down at the bottom. 
um, I'm going to go in there and figure that out. I can also see that they've got uh, 3 million training courses. Uh, and I don't know if that's actually a correct statement or whether that's like 3 million training hours or something. But if I'm in the training side of the house, then I might be looking at that. Let me move to the next slide. Uh, right there. Um, so they're continuing it. These, so I'm going to show you these in a second, but these other uh, major bullets, they're, they're other systems. And so each one of them, I can look in down here at Vantage. Here's Miranda Coleman. Who is this person? How do I follow her? How do I learn what she's saying? Could I meet with her and talk? Um, there's little bits of uh, stuff they're talking about, but if I'm in the cloud side of the house, up here, they're talking about they're doing some sort of cloud migration, or they did, related to ASAP Hub. And I don't know if I said it correctly, but, you know, getting in there and asking those questions, Enterprise Data Services Catalog Proof of Concept, to me, this top bullet at the um, third sub bullet, this concept kickoff tells me there's all sorts of future work. Proof of concept is what you do before a prototype, before a pilot, before a rollout, right? So there's potentially all sorts of stuff that I might be able to get engaged. Who's got that proof of concept? These are things that I would be asking myself in there, right? I'm not just looking for an opportunity name and I'm going to write a proposal. I'm doing business development. I'm doing capture. And those two both mean developing relationships and getting in the door to ask more questions. Um, coming down to this next slide, and I just realized like I'll have to pick up speed on uh, talking about this because I get so caught up in and how great the information is that they share. But this slide here is awesome. It's, it's tying together the Army objectives with RDAP's objectives. RDAP serves the Army. It's not the other way around. And um, so uh, for some reason, it doesn't say it here. But over on the right-hand side, you can see there's these higher um, Army objectives. When I go into RDAP and I'm going to be having conversations, these bullet points give me the questions to ask as it relates to understanding what they're trying to do, maybe some challenges. And then at the bottom, it says RDAP will, bottom center here. These are things they're going to be doing. They're gonna design for maximum data correctness. If this is your space, this probably makes total sense and you would be getting in. And these same kind of decks are out there related to cyber, related to um, uh, construction, uh, environmental um, improvements on buildings where the um, whoever's briefing will tie it back to a higher level set of objectives, in this case, Army. And so you want to be looking at this because this is the type of stuff that lets them know you care, right? There's that line that says nobody cares what you know until they know that you care. And so in here, you're doing the homework that um, proves that you care. This thing is uh, awesome. And you'll see me come back and forth, maybe uh, back and forth on this. But right here, obviously, you can see the two uh, program managers for um, RDAP, right? The uh, program manager, deputy program manager. But then those programs I just said, where you see ADIS and ASIP or Vantage or AMIS, <laughs> I don't know if I'm brutalizing the acronyms, but you can see them all right here. And these provide you the point of context. And later on, you'll actually get the um, emails and you can find the phone numbers. And so you can reach out to these people. Uh, that's an important uh, piece of information that that is on there as you build your understanding of RDAP. If you want to support the Army data and analytics platforms, these are the uh, people you start with. This is the place you start. The action item I would give you when you land on a slide like this is don't just dump their information in your contact list. Go follow them on LinkedIn or uh, go see if you can find information out on the internet about these people. And most importantly, what is Keith Baylor writing about AMIS? Um, if you do, then you understand what he's saying before you ever have a chance to meet with him or maybe somebody on his team. And again, it comes back to demonstrating that you care enough to have researched what they said. Um, just cruising down here. So this is another great slide. Um, up on the top, it's the Army modernization uh, goals, right? And so you see in here, they're modernizing uh, large scale data sharing, hybrid cloud and some of these other bullets. RDAP is talking from the bottom here saying, hey, how do we take data platforms and data management and move them up to be enablers of the army modernization that's happening? And so if you're in the data space, this makes total sense where you start looking in and these, uh, what is this, six, seven, eight, um, these eight bullets, I would personally rank them. Which ones are we absolute best at and which are we eighth at? And you can't put two ones. And if you do that, 
<coughs> excuse me, then you're able to go in and have these conversations that drive the customer to this point where they stop looking at you as a vendor and they look at you as a subject matter expert. They look at you as a trusted advisor. They want to have a dialogue with you. They don't want to just answer your questions, but they want to ask you questions and, and get your input. That's business development. That's capture. Okay, so um, these ones I'm going to go through pretty fast uh, so that, you know, really you're just seeing them, but I'm able to kind of move forward. But each one of the programs that I pointed, uh, pointed out then has slides inside the deck that really drive forward what do we do, the capabilities that we provide. And this is for um, AESIP, right, ASIP Hub. Um, and in there, it's giving you the capabilities. It's helping you understand, okay, in this group, this is what they do, right? And um, and the reason this is important, if I if I back up, where do I back up to? To here, to these programs, you can't help all of them equally. I know sometimes we feel like we could. Hey, we do everything data, right? But which ones can you help more than the other? And that's something really important to understand. What's the difference between Vantage and Amos? So when you go in, you know where you knock it out of the park. It's really important when you meet with uh, people in general, but in particular customers, that you don't try to project yourself as more than you are because they are experts. They will be able to, um, uh, you know, uh, flesh you out. They'll be able to tell immediately whether you're experts or whether you're just talking data terms, right? And, and I um, use an example of if you can go in there with stories, stories from previous jobs you've had, previous um, roles your company has had, customers you've helped um, in the past. If you can tell stories related to what they're doing, then you're an expert who should be talking to them. It doesn't mean you can't talk to bit different people, but don't go in as if you're a level three expert when you're really a level two expert or something. Uh, just something to keep in mind. But this helps you understand more about each one of those programs and which ones you're uh, more of an expert on. And then when you look at FY22 program priorities, and I would be looking uh, – also trying to get in and talk to them about, hey, what are you looking at for FY23? Because it's coming up really soon. But here I can look at this and I thought this was all, RDAP was all data, right? But I'm looking here talking about they're transitioning to the new AWS managed cloud services provider, right? Is this something that your company does? You have both cloud expertise and you have data expertise. Well, looking at this, now you can start tying your stories together. Um, the other thing I really like below the program priorities is the software technology stack. One thing to keep in mind is um, everything I talk about goes all the way back to this tool called the Dynamic Small Business Search or DSBS. In DSBS is where you tell your story the first time. In there is where you have keywords. So if you're an 8A company and you can't be found and you're not being found by customers, well, maybe you're not using the keywords they are using. So when I look through here, I, I look in and I go, well, uh, this Advana on um, bottom right, if you're tracking on Advana, well, that's a DOD uh, data analytics, data whole system. And, and I don't want to go into it, right? I'll do a separate one on that. But Advana is this huge one that's at the DOD level that's being pushed all around to the commands throughout the Department of Defense. Do you have Advana in your um, DSBS profile? If somebody went to search right now for SDVO Advana, would they find you, right? And then if you haven't heard me say this before, DSBS is what feeds your capability statement, your um, PowerPoint briefing deck if you use one, your website, um, all your marketing material get fed by the very basic foundational tool of the dynamic small business search. Anyways, the reason I like that though is you see keywords. Do you, do you talk about um, cybersecurity in the way that maybe they talk about it? Um, and then over on the left-hand side, the other thing you see is just this mission of the ASIP hub is it's not just some small army thing. They're helping the Defense Health Agency, um, Defense Logistics Agency, Office of Secretary of Defense. They're working with a lot of different stakeholders, whether they're serving them or whether they're grabbing their data and bringing it together. Um, this one slide gives you that much fuller understanding and prepares you to have the first meeting with whoever uh, you reach at the ASIP hub. As you look at the rest of this deck, it's a similar thing, right? The layout's pretty similar, what they talk about. I'm not going to go through each one, but um, when you find these decks, it's the same thing. And I love it because it tells me so much more than I might have known before. 
Um, so I'm going to skip down to the bottom part here uh, before I switch over. So then the other thing that you will find in a deck like this is um, opportunities. And so often they'll put in their procurement opportunities. You can see that these ones are coming up and they're talking about uh, Q2 for FY22, which is January through March, but maybe it got delayed. Maybe it got pushed a little bit. Um, I would go look these ones up and um, either reach out to the customer, the small business specialist, whoever, and ask them if it's um, dropped yet. You can go look in SAM, you can go look in GovWin. There's all sorts of tools you can go look at. But if you're in the data space, what they're telling you is that these programs that we just looked at above that fall under RDEP, which fall in, falls under PEO EIS, these are five opportunities related to data in one way or another that are dropping. And you should be considering, can I go in there and prime it? Can I go in there and um, be a solid uh, you know, participant on the team? And to me, what that means is 20% or more, meaning you bring past performance, or can I go in there and just get a piece to begin to build my experience? Whatever it is, if you understand the opportunities, you can turn to your teaming partners and begin to work these opportunities in the capture side uh, on your pipeline. Uh, the last slide I think here is the um, points of contact. And I told you, here are all the leads. And you know, I was talking about Keith as an example before, but here's his email address, right? I never recommend reaching directly out to him until you're ready. And there's this level of preparation um, before you reach out. And I might actually do a whole LinkedIn live just on that. But look how great this is, right? Many of these um, uh, slide decks come with a phone number as well. So you can pick up the phone. But you probably find Keith Baylor on the internet and find his phone number uh, out there. So you can per perhaps leave a voicemail or maybe even reach him to schedule a meeting. But you can call to do an intro meeting um, and, uh, and start tracking. So that was a walk through the deck. And I wanted to... <clears throat> quickly switch over and just tell you when I do something like that, I come back out and I'm like, okay, let me do a little bit more research. That deck was a lot of great information there. Uh, let me come back to the top of that one. A lot of great information. This came out of an AFSIA event that the army did over there. Um, but I can come into uh, RDEP now and in RDEP, I can do additional research. Uh, the, the thing that I, I find that is really uh, kind of ironic is when I come into here, here's uh, uh, Colonel Wolf, uh, Bob Wolf, and he's the project manager. Um, there's a generic phone number or phone number here, right? But there's no email. But in the deck, there's an email for this guy, which is awesome. Um, you know, so he just puts, they put his email down there. So you can get this at an industry day slide sometimes, but you can't get it off their website. And this is why I'm always saying do multiple uh, stabs at research. Um, anyways, let me, uh, I'm not trying to get you to read the words here so much yet is I'm trying to show you that there's information. So I'm in this army data and analytics platform. This is where their high level description is right here are those programs that we just looked at and talked about. And, um, as you go into each one of them, they might, uh, talk about something. So let's look at convergence, uh, enterprise business systems. So this is the EBS, right? EBS C. And in here I can get a lot more information. And this allows me to begin to understand more information. Remember, this, this uh, LinkedIn Live is about how do you get into program office. One of the ways is to look at that deck, you get contact information, but you don't want to just go barreling into the program office without doing that preparation. And, and so in here, it allows you to do this research where um, here it talks about the converged EBS system will combine the Army's ERP program. So if you're in the Enterprise Resource uh, Program? No, that's not right. Can't remember what P stood for. Somewhere in here, COVID has gotten rid of half my brain. But um, anyways, the Army has e ERP programs, right? And um, EBS is combining it, is what I'm learning as I'm reading this, right? And it's integrating 24 Army capabilities. Well, what are they? I might look at it a little more. And the reason this is important is because when I go in to talk with them, I want them to feel like I did my homework. They don't have to teach me what they know is on the internet. And so here I can see where they're talking about, um, they have the EBS uh, multifunctional capability team. You know, as I look at this a little bit more, I might be able to talk with them about, well, could you expand on what these teams are, uh, what the team's doing and, you know, where they're spread out because they're, they're located at different places. The point I want to leave you at here uh, on this one is that there's questions you can generate from the information that you read 
which will all help you um, move forward. And then each one of these uh, programs, they all have um, a, a fact sheet. Many, uh, many agencies provide fact sheets related to a lot of the stuff they're doing. But here it just expands on what they're doing. This little fancy uh, fact sheet. But the cool thing is, again, gives you research information before you go in. And this is the part I wanted to show you is that here it's a roadmap of what they're trying to do. And I can see some of their activity. I can instantly see that, um, uh, you know, the ACIB hub is somehow involved in this. And I'm trying to pay attention to it. For those of you who are in the business process reengineering side of the house, these black boxes all make sense. But this roadmap is helping me understand what's going on in there. When I have conversations with people and they say certain terms, I shouldn't be surprised. I don't need to understand it as much as they do, but I also don't need to be surprised, right? And so um, anyways, this stuff's really handy. And then the last thing is you can see where they, they kind of talk about um, uh, the activity they have. And if you're in this space, this is something important for you to understand. It's not a small environment, right? It's 200,000 unique viewers, users across multiple commands. That's a big deal, right? This level of activity, 237 million times annually, uh, screen clicks. What's that down to a day, down to an hour? You begin to, uh, to get the size of it. So uh, one of the last things I'll just point out is if you go into um, Explore and you saw me go, let me back up here because um, I want you to see where I first went in. First went into um, the AR, uh, RDAP. Come on. Sorry here. Scroll up. Okay. So the RDAP, I first went in here and you, I look at these breadcrumbs. That's what this is called at the top where it has hyperlinks going backwards. And I can look at the breadcrumb for data. Um, and here under data, I can see those programs that we just reviewed. And those are the ones I can keep clicking through and seeing more. So we just did EBS, right? The other thing, and I'm, I don't have a lot of time left. I'm going to wrap up. But the other thing is take a look at the news because in the news, I can begin to see um, I can see the dates on how recent it was, but it was still there. But I can begin to learn more about what's going on. If I go into a meeting, I want to know whatever they just said in this uh, phase one or this um, they're getting an upgrade, right? Whatever these things are, it takes you 10 minutes to read it, but it moves you forward uh, in knowledge. And it also moves you forward in the relationship because it shows that you, uh, um, you know what you're talking about, certainly to a degree. And then the last thing on breadcrumbs, I did... Um, uh, mission areas. Let me back up. So that was, uh, you saw data. And then here, if I click on mission areas, I can see more of where PEO is, uh, PEO EIS. And the only part I wanted to show you was we were only looking at data, this first one. Now I can see how it begins to relate to the rest of the mission areas for PEO EIS. And as I look in there, this is a long-term customer that potentially represents millions and millions of dollars of revenue for you over the over the future years here, how much time would you put in to understanding what they do? Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, I'm wrapping up my time here. I'm going to pull this guy back up. I'm going to see if I can stop sharing somewhere in here. Uh, nope, I gave you the crazy screen. Um, but anyways, if you found this valuable, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see me do more of this where I dive deeper into particular areas, um, you know, let me know in the comments or send me a personal message. Also, if you'd like me to go do this in a particular um, skill set or core competency area, I'd be happy to do that as well. The purpose of these LinkedIn sessions are to try to give sales tips. And the closer I can make them um, towards your business, right? Not every day towards your business, but if you give me a suggestion tomorrow, I'll be happy to uh, try to tackle it. Um, okay. Again, if you found it valuable, give it a thumbs up. Remember, government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you next time.